What's up, y'all? It's Rod 49. I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. All right, y'all. We got Rob 49 with us jumping off the porch today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. How you doing? I'm feeling good. Now, I did see you posted up with Doughboy. So oh, talk yeah. to us about that link up. Uh, Doughboy, a real one. Nah, what's that? Um, he had started messing with my music, like when I had got posted on Say Cheese. And he just been showing me love ever since that. He shot the video. He told me, um, I had, he told me to send him a song with an open verse. I sent him the open verse. He said, man, he told me yesterday, he like, man, I liked that song so much. <laughs> they didn't want to record me at the studio. I went in my basement and recorded it. Like, yeah, he on some real shit like that. I love that. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, he a real one, for sure. Now, is this, this is your first time in Atlanta, is it? Uh-uh, uh-uh. So is it a little different now that like a lot of people are catching on to you when you come down here? Most dev, because this is like my second, my third time in Atlanta, second time in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. My first time I came out here, I was making music for like a month at the time. So I had came out here trying to promote my shit. Nobody was fucking with me. Really? I told myself, really? like, man, I had went home. I'm like, man, I'm about to turn my own shit up first. I ain't going nowhere else till I get my own city on lock. Did you like perform at a showcase or something like that? Down here? Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. I just was like, my um, my cousins and stuff make clothes and stuff, so they giving clothes to rappers and shit. They trying to link us up. They're like, yeah, right. you know what I'm saying? Like on yeah. that type of time. That is so crazy to me how like, you know, stuff can change that fast and now you come back and everybody's like, let's link up and shit yeah, like that. That's crazy though, for sure. Now I want to take it back a little bit. So I do know that you're from New Orleans. Yeah. So talk to us about your upbringing there. Um, I mean, growing up in New Orleans, to me, it's like all you know. So ain't really, at the time, we didn't think we was living bad, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but, now that I'm moving around the world and stuff, man, that is a whole different like environment, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't never like nobody was piss poor and then it just was like so much violence and shit. So that's it. It's just about getting through violence and stuff like that. What's what we mainly known for down there. So. so how would you describe your upbringing? Mine was smooth, like my mama, you know what I'm saying? My mama, I could always depend on my mama if I ever needed anything. My daddy was in jail, but I'm talking to him through like the, the jail phone and shit. So I ain't really like my daddy was dead, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But he wasn't there physically, but he was there mentally for me. Like, so I ain't really had no bad upbringing like that. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like everybody shit was the same normal. So um, what age would you say you officially like jumped off the porch? What you mean? Like <laughs> jump off the porch, what you talking about? Basically, like, <laughs> when would you say you started to experience like, life? Oh on no, your no, home? I was experiencing life when I was like ten years old. Like, I'm from the project, so you, I was outside. You know what? I watched your interview, and I was gonna let you tell us, but yeah. I know that you stated that you were a man at ten years old. Yeah, most dev. Like I said, my dad was in jail, so I got two sisters. I gotta be the man of the house. My mama never home. My mama always at work, so I'm always outside, like for real, like outside. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. So now that you're older, did you ever go back and think like, dang, I had a lot of responsibilities on me at 10 years old? Most deaf. I, ain't, I don't even want, never want my children to go through like this type of stuff I was seeing and shit like ever in their life. I feel like the stuff I, but I'm about to say at the same time, the stuff I seen made me who I am today, you know what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. because certain situations I wouldn't put myself in, but yeah, if, if it come to it, I don't never want my children to go through like the little things I had to go through for sure. Yeah, what would you say were some of your responsibilities being that young? It's just like, keep in mind, I'm telling you my mom is at work, like so, and my daddy in jail, so all responsibility that come with that is everything we had to do, like make our own food and, you know what I'm saying? Not help my mom with the bills and nothing like, cause I ain't mm -hmm. never had no bum mama. Like my mom wasn't no bum at all, but. And our rent was $25 in the project, so ain't nothing like that. But you know what I'm saying? Just being there for my little sister and shit, like getting her for school, getting her ready. Like I did all that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want my children to ever have that. I want all of them to grow up with the age they is. You're 10 years old, act like a 10 year old. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Now, another story that I found like interesting with you is, you know, during that time of Hurricane Katrina, you had stated that you guys drove five hours 
With oh, you've been studying then. I know. All right, all right, all right. Come on, all right. So, you know, you over here trying to be all quiet and stuff. You don't know. I got everything. All like. right, come on, come on. I'm ready, come on. So, basically, like, you know, you and your family, y'all drove five hours with no AC. Like, just going through that, and I know it was probably pretty traumatic for you guys. Yeah. Basically, like, talk to us all about that. I'm out of sea. It, I was talking to my mom about that because my mama had saw that interview. She was like, you didn't even tell him the car was running hot <laughs> because the car was running hot, too. So we yeah. stopping every, like, and the windows didn't roll down and the car running hot. We stopping every 15 minutes with a gallon of water. Got to wait till the car cool down and you put the gallon of water in there. Then you go 15 more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, I ain't lying. That was crazy. It, I really remember everything from that whole experience, like, for real. And I was like five, but I remember that whole everything, going to Houston and everything. Do you feel like the trauma from Hurricane Katrina still kind of lingers with people? Like you still, like that's something that you're like never going to forget. I'm about to say most deaf because after Hurricane Katrina, it's like New Orleans ain't really had no more hope for nothing. Like no matter what people wanted to do with their life, like in Texas, if you go to Texas, they got a kid talking about he won't be a rapper. All the Texas rappers, like, really there and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? To help him get there. I want to be a football player. They got NFL players willing to help him get there. New Orleans didn't have that no more. Because out of Katrina, everybody, you know what I'm saying, with influence like that, realized that they ain't had nothing in New Orleans. So they ain't really come back, like, for real. And I know, like, New Orleans is, y'all have a lot of violence out there. Mm -hmm. So... Could you go back to where you're from, like now that you're starting to buzz and stuff like that? Is it safe for a rapper to go back to New Orleans I mean, when they most make it? I mean, but at the same time, being from a hood, you know, it's never safe. Like no matter if I wasn't rapping, you know what I'm saying? I I can easily go back to hey, you know, it ain't gonna happen or nothing like that. But why would I even put myself in that position? You know what I'm saying? That's that's goofy to me for real. I'm straight on that. I'm done with that shit for real. Now, going back into your younger days, how would you describe yourself, like, at school and as a student? Like, what type of student were you? I, man, it's crazy. I was just talking to my partners about that. I was a good student. I was bad in class, but, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't bad how everybody else was bad. I used to just <laughs> be bad, make jokes all day, yes. get put out. I ain't in there selling no crack or nothing. Like, I wasn't that bad, nah. Yeah, I was, I was really a good kid, class clown, probably. You know what I'm saying? Making everybody laugh and shit, but... Nah, ain't nothing. Dropping out wasn't ever on my mind. Failing no classes wasn't ever on my mind. Like, I knew, go to class. Like, you know what I'm saying? The girls right, in class. Right. I'm here for, for class and girls. That's <laughs> it, for real. Now, I know the girls was, you know, giving you some money back then, too. Man, you've been studying. No <laughs> cap. Man, I remember the first day I ever, I ever, um, I ever got some money from a girl. The fat girls used to give me money in school, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. How, like, what's the most that they gave you before? I think I left school with like twenty dollars before. Twenty dollars. Yeah, like twenty dollars. Was you high school? Was you spending it right then and there? Or you was just, you know, stacking it up. I wasn't like it wasn't nothing like it was no fucking hustle or nothing yeah. like that. Nah, it was just like give me a dollar. But I know they're trying to get in cool with the, you know what I'm saying? This is this a nice looking nigga, you know what I'm saying? They trying to get in cool with me. They gonna give me that dollar. <laughs> They were really giving me dollars and stuff. I remember the first day. I'm like, damn, she really gave me that dollar. Let me keep going with this. You was a whole city boy. <laughs> you was a city boy. <laughs> now, I do want to ask you, what were some major life lessons that you learned early on? Mm, I'm about to say it was so many lessons. I think really, like, keeping stuff to yourself, you know what I'm saying? Because people, I learned early that people talk, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they'll be in your face, but they might fuck with somebody that you even having a conversation about harder than they fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? And then things get out of hand or something. So I just keep shit to myself for real. Right. So that's the biggest, like, lesson I learned, just to keep stuff to yourself, your was, thoughts. Was there, like, a specific situation that you went through to where you uh -uh. was, like... It was just everything in this world, like, everything in this world is, like, like, created around, like, talking. You know what I'm saying? Gossip and shit with other people. Like, if you shut up, stay to yourself... Ain't nobody gonna ever be able to figure you out. They can't say nothing about you because you don't really talk like that to them. So just stand to myself. Now, um, another thing that I found, found interesting about you is that like your whole household was in the streets, but you weren't. Yeah. So how were you able to not get caught up in the influence of that? I always wanted some money for real. Like I ain't never want, 
I mean, anybody could like, you know what I'm saying, grab a gun and go, you know what I'm saying, do that type of shit, but everybody can't go get no money, for sure. And I, they was dying and shit, like my family was getting killed and shit. I'm like, you know, I don't care how gangster the nigga is, like ain't no nigga trying to die out here. Right. I want to get some money. That was, that was my whole, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think that's really crazy how you really maintained yourself and stayed with your head on straight. Just yeah. with having that around you, like it's easy to get caught up in that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't, uh, I ain't know none of that. We got to talk about you being in the Army, okay? Your yeah. National Guard. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay, so <laughs> talk to us about how that even came about. Man, I was in class one day. It was my last period. And the, the recruit came and they're like, yeah, free college. I know my mama, like, my, my, I got a big sister, so my mama was helping her with college and shit, you know what I'm saying? I told her I ain't had no bum mama, so she helping her with college, but mm -hmm. we still fucked up, like, for real. Like, lights going off, water going off, all type of shit. So I'm like, free college? So I asked my mama, I'm like, mom, how you feel about me going through this? First of all, I didn't know it was like this. Like, I'm thinking I could just go to college, them bitches gonna let me go to college. I ain't thinking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I really gotta go yeah. to this shit. So boom, I want, when I graduated, I wound up going to like a train or some shit like that. I went to the train, I came home. Man, I hated that shit every okay, day. Okay, so how was the training? Cause I be seeing the videos. The train, they gotta, you gotta cut your hair off. You gotta cut, I ain't lying. The only thing that it really did for me was show me that I could do anything in this world. Like you can really do anything in this world if you put your mind to it. Them people told us like run 15 miles or something. I'm fresh off just doing nothing, like, I'm 15 like, oh, miles 15 miles and shit, like, that shit sound crazy, huh? That shit is But awesome. if you go there today and you run a 15, when you're done, you're going to be like, I thought I was about to die, but I didn't. You know what I'm saying? I really got through it, anything, you know what I'm saying? Do you That's, still got it in you to run 15 miles? Man, I think I tore this ACL on a dirt bike. <laughs> I tore this ACL playing basketball. My knees are done. I ain't no, ain't no running no more. Was done. Ain't no running. Are you still like active in it or you done with the um, army? I don't really be going to that shit no more. Mm -hmm. They they ain't tripping for real. They know it already. They be seeing me everywhere. They like, yeah, we see you boy, go ahead. So were you <laughs> even like freestyling a little bit in the army as well or when, like rapping and stuff? Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't never trying to be a rapper. My partner was rapping. Like it was never a thought in my head. Like my partner was rapping. I went to the studio session. One of his songs was trash. I'm like, bro, this shit trash. He like, you finish this song. I wound up finishing the song, and I just started rapping from there. It was just that shit was overnight. Like I, I wasn't just sitting there for months trying to get a, a the right rap together and nothing like that. So mm -hmm. nah, I wasn't freestyling or nothing. What were your dreams before even thinking about becoming a rapper? Before I was rapping, I wanted to like. Like probably do houses or something like you know what I'm saying. I was just trying to figure out how I can get enough money to start building houses and shit because that's what I really wanted to do in my life. Now you had a friend named. Can you correct me on the name because I do not want to mess this up. But is it T Man? Yeah. Talk to us about your friend. Man, T Man is crazy as shit. That's my real. That's my real brother though. Um, right now he just you know what I'm saying. He in a good position. I know, and I um, when I was watching your interview, I know that you said like he was w the one when you were younger, like you used to wear his clothes and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> now I remember this one time. I ain't even gonna, man, I don't even worry about it. Boy, he know what I'm talking about. That. <laughs> yeah, that dude a fool. He used to be giving me his clothes though for sure. He kept me fresh for sure though. So I'm a huge Frank Ocean fan. Yeah. And you said that you listened to Frank Ocean, and I was like, what the hell? You think I'm lying? You know I'm finna test you to see Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, what's your favorite Frank Ocean song? I like the whole Blinded. I listen to that shit every day. Did you listen to Channel Orange? Not really. When he dropped Blinded, it was like... Well, <laughs> what was your favorite song on Blinded? You know songs on Blinded? Yes. Sing one right now, I'ma finish it. <laughs> I, just want, I just want to show you like... Okay, wait, let me think. <laughs> Dang, you putting me on the spot. Okay, um, now who <laughs> else did you listen to besides like Frank Ocean? I listened to The Weeknd. Uh, I would listen to Drake. I listened to Lil Wayne. Mm, well, that's, that's about it for real. Now, when would you say you started to take your rap career serious? When I, when I, I had dropped my first shit and like, People in the city was like really listening to it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, we got, yeah, this is what we doing. So I went to the studio a couple more times. 
I dropped another song and like the whole city was just like, yeah, this the one. And ever since that, I was like, all right, that's it. We just gonna keep going. That even happened. Like I'm thinking about it, I'm like, damn, that shit was still some bullshit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Really? All this was a all this was bullshit, I swear to God. I really lucked up on some shit for real. Now, what I do find interesting too is like you don't really rap about like killing people, like you don't yeah. really you don't really yeah. do all of that. So why did you wanna take that different route when it comes to your music? Because I mean, in my raps, I, I talk about shit that's like real in my life. I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying, cater to no audience. Like I said, I'm a hustler. I rap about street, getting money. So that's, that's really it. I ain't about being here saying, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What would you say is like the biggest risk that you took with your rap career? Just being a rapper. People just hate all day on rappers. Like, people you don't even know. So everything is a risk with a rapper. Like, people trying to play with you and shit, you know what I'm saying? So just being a rapper is a whole risk, you know what I'm saying? That's like one of the most dangerous jobs out right now. I literally just did an interview and we talked about how dangerous it is to be a rapper right that now. That shit really dangerous, like for real. Like you, that shit dangerous, trust me. If you being a rapper, like my daddy told me, I be telling my daddy because I don't really be talking to nobody about that type of shit, but my daddy and my mama. So. Mm -hmm. I was telling my daddy, he like, they come with the territory, you know what I'm saying? So my advice to all y'all, if you're trying to be a rapper, be ready for that. That shit come with the territory. I'm talking about real shit. Like. So now that you're like in it, I'm, well, I give rappers props because I don't think I could do it. Like y'all literally got to like, everybody around you, like you got to watch who is literally around you. Like y'all always got to really be on y'all's toes all the time. Most definitely. Is that draining for you at times? Nah, not no more. It was at first, but now that like I'm getting mature in mm -hmm. my mind, I'm understanding like it's cool to be by yourself and stay on your own grind. So I don't even be having like, you know what I'm saying? I have my real friends around me, people that I knew since I ain't had nothing. Like I can leave a million dollars in the house, they ain't gonna touch a dollar. Like so. Yeah, I don't really be having too many people around me no more like I used to have used to have and shit like that. So I ain't really got that to worry about no more. So, yeah. Now, I know the dynamics are really different with, of course, the Army and the music industry. But yeah. is there anything that you learned in the Army that you could apply to your music career? Mm, bulletproof calls was that <laughs> applied to music career. Really? Yeah, it was <laughs> What about like the discipline and like the structure? Um, I don't know because it taught me so much. I really feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like the whole militant way of moving is coming from them with me. But at the same time, like I said, I'm from the project. We've been moving this way. So I, I can't really answer that question for real. Okay, okay. Now getting back into your music, how were you really able to establish your identity when it came to that? Like like who I was in the music. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I was just rapping about things that I was doing and people would be telling me like, oh, you you this and you that. So I just like, I let the people do it for real. Like they say, if they, oh, you toxic? I'm going straight make a toxic song. <laughs> straight up. If they say, oh, you a lover boy? I'm going straight make a lover boy song. So yeah, I let the people do it for real. Really? Uh -huh. Oh, I like that. Now, what was your uh, parents' like reaction when they found out that you wanted to like pursue a music career? My daddy, I don't know. I don't know how he really felt. I don't know. But my <laughs> mom, I let my mama hear my hear my first song. She was like, she damn near was about to cry in the bed. I remember walking in there. We were still in the trenches at the time. And I'm in the army and everything. We still in the trenches. I walked in the um, I walked in the house. I'm like, mom, I made a song last night. I let her hear, she like, man, I caught the chills listening to this. Really? She's like, everything you saying is just, how did you even put that into, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because she know this is real, like, everything mm -hmm. you saying is real, how did you even make this a story and on a beat and make it sound good? Like, my mom was just shook about that, so. Yeah. What was the song that you showed her? Uh, it was called Show and Prove. It was one of my, like, my slower songs, like just, you know what I'm saying, a storytelling song. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I do know that um, whenever you dropped your first tape, you was kind of just like, ugh, like you wanted to. Oh my God, I wanted to delete what that shit. What happened? Nothing, that shit was just like, you know what I'm saying? When, all right, boom, so when you making music, you ever went to the studio before? 
Yeah, we got. We and got you say to yourself, to I hate my voice. I do that now. My, I with my hated interviews. my voice. <laughs> I hated it until I, until other people started loving it. So when I first put it out there, keep in mind, not that many people listening to my first shit. So I'm thinking like, man, they probably in here like, man, this nigga sound terrible. You know what I'm saying? But it started listening to him like, all right, it's cool, it's cool. But oh, then I dropped my second shit, they're like, I love his voice. So then I'm like, all right, they love my voice. So that was really my biggest pet peeve for wanting to delete it. Now, how are you really able to create a buzz for yourself? Um, in high school, I was already like one of them niggas. So mm-hmm. it wasn't really nothing I had to work for. That's really why I picked my name to be Rob Four Nine because when I said Rob rapping, people gonna say what Rob, and I'm the Rob they really won't hear. You know what I'm saying? So when they say Rob rapping, they say me is like, oh, we listening to that off dump. So yeah, I was already been. You know what I'm saying? Him. So is the four nine is that for like you being from the fourth word and the ninth word? Yeah, it's. Like, it's I've like, always it's wondered like, what was the difference with the fourth and the ninth. It's far away. It's just. It's just. Both of them projects. Mm-hmm. It's just. It's just not in the same project. It's like. Probably like seven miles away from each other. I know I might say cheese in the I say like 30 miles. The city got on my ass about that. They're like, man, you sound dumb as hell. Yeah, that's 30 miles like down there. Baton Rouge from New Orleans, but I was tripping. I didn't really understand like everything you see. People going to listen to that shit. Yeah, yeah people definitely. Gonna listen to that shit. And you were like mutuals between like the fourth and the ninth word. Yeah. So it was never no like confusion, yeah. none yeah, of that. Never no confusion. Ain't nobody. Nobody gonna mess with me like that. And so they're pretty supportive of your music right now. Yeah, everybody, really. It's not even for the Nine World thing. It's like the whole New Orleans thing. Yeah, I'm bringing that shit back home for sure. And how would you describe the current music state in New Orleans right now? New Orleans is doing beautiful in music right now. It's just we need that platform to even show y'all what we working with, you know what I'm saying? I feel like right now I'm on a platform to bring all this there. So yeah. I feel like we got some dope artists, you know what I'm saying? I ain't about to name no people because I forget one and it's like, uh, you know <laughs> Yeah, definitely. But yeah, we doing some good things in the world right now. So when you say y'all need more of a platform, is it like, well, what exactly like do you I mean said, by like, that? Like I said, for as like Katrina, mm-hmm. like I don't fuck, you know what I'm saying? None of the rappers and shit or nothing because I understand totally like they did the right thing. Like it's time to get out of the city. Most rappers die in their city, you know what I'm saying? So I understand that 100, but like Texas rappers, if he decide he won't rap today, they're going to have people like, you know what I'm saying, uplifting him and shit. But New Orleans not like that no more. So everybody got to, if you, if you want man right now, that mean you got that shit off the float by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, it's, that's really what I'm saying about what? the platform. We ain't really got the platform. We damn near building that shit by ourselves until the right ear hairs. You know what I'm saying? How long did it take for you to catch your buzz? Really, like, <laughs> three, four weeks. Three, dead four ass. weeks? But I'm lying, bro. I'm dead serious. Wow. Like, three, four weeks. They was already fucking with it. Dang, that's crazy. So when you were pursuing your career, were you living in Texas? When you were? I, I was living in New Orleans. You was in New Orleans. Yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry, I thought you was uh, in Texas. Nah, still in the trenches in New Orleans. What would you say is, like, a big risk that you've had to take with your music career? A big risk? Um, I'm about to say, really not nothing. I mean, everything is just real life at this point. Everything Mm -hmm. you do is like you can't take it back, so you can't even look at it like a risk. Because your life is never going to be the same no more. So everything is just life now with me. I'm not even about to play with my mind like that. Do you e- have you ever forgot like, dang, I can't be moving regular like this no Yeah, (laughs) I just noticed that. I just noticed that like last month, like just moving freely, like. Stop in here to go get some food. They're like, oh my God, I can have a picture. And now I'm really jammed up in the trenches, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm by myself. Like, I ain't, I don't, I don't be needing it with me. Well, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't being cocky or nothing. But I just, that's just how I move. I move by myself. Right. Until I start realizing, like, man, you can't do that. Because you don't think like that, but other people just slime you. Like, they don't want to see you win, like, for real. Yeah, you definitely got to watch. Like, you think about getting security? Oh yeah, I got security everywhere now. You got security? I got security. Okay, I go to the period. studio. <laughs> I got one outside the studio. I got one before you walk in the studio door. Like, I'm on that. Ain't going for nothing. Now, when do you feel you make your best music? Man, I make my best music 
probably, I ain't even know this, but I used to think I make my best music when I'm by myself. But obviously, I make my best music when I'm around like buku girls, smoking, drinking, oh, my Lord. partners. <laughs> like, I make my best music. I ain't even know that to my homie. Um, I had set some shit up. We went to the studio. I'm like, yeah, this is it. And I made that yeet yeet shit. Yeah. What's been your inspiration lately when it's been coming to making your music? Um, just still rapping about the life I live, you know what I'm saying? My partner used to tell me I need to start rapping about things that I've been through more. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never want to go that deep and shit. But now I see what he was saying when he, because I was telling him I was going to wait till I get there to rap about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now I feel like I don't even want to do that no more. I want to rap about still everything I'm going through, nothing. Like, if I'm in Miami today and I'm in Atlanta tomorrow, I want to rap about that. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just what I've been going through lately. So, yeah. Now, we got to get into your recent project that you dropped, For God. Yeah. Why did you title it that? Man, I don't even know. I swear to God. I, I don't even know. I was thinking about that the other day. I'm like, why I made this For God? But, yeah, I really don't know. I swear to God. I can't, I don't want to lie in my, in, my, in, my, in my interviews. Because if somebody asks me that tomorrow and I give them a lie, it's a different lie. It's gonna, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I really don't know. Now, what was the creative process like with this project? Um, we just took the full guy thing and just, just went with the, with the godly look. That's it. My creation, uh, I mean, my um, inspiration was just like, I don't know. I was in kind of a depression state around that time, so really? I don't even want to talk about my, you know what I'm saying, creative process about it. Because it wasn't really me, I feel like. You know what I'm saying? That music wasn't me for sure. Like, I feel like my next shit going to be me. This is really me. Uh, I was, so did you feel like it was like a, like a depressive album? Most def. Most definitely. It was a mixtape, though, but most definitely. I didn't know it was on the album yet. Most def, that shit was depressing as shit. I don't even like listening to it. For I was real. just finna ask, do you go back and listen to it? I don't even it? like listening to it. For really? Real. Nah, because I'm embarrassed about it. That I even <sighs> let my feelings get involved in my music. You know what I'm saying? Real talk, I'm telling you. But was it at least like a outlet for you, like therapy in a sense? Most definitely. Like, I be hearing songs on there, I was like, why would I, like, why would I let them in on me like that? You know what I'm saying? When that's not the t kind of rap I'm trying to be for real. No, but you gotta understand also that like, we be needing to hear that because we be going through stuff. So it's like, yeah. if, you know, sometimes we can't talk to our parents, but if we listen to our favorite artists and he talking about the same thing that we going through, like, yeah. Yeah. so if you do put out something like conscious, like, you know, again, don't feel bad about it or embarrassed. Like, we be needing to hear that stuff. All right, I got you. We got to talk about you collaborating with Currency on Hit a Lick. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What was that like, collaborating with him? I ain't lying. That was crazy. Because I ain't, I ain't think Currency would fuck with me. I'm like, oh, he probably don't fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? But my partner, um, his name LP, he, he signed to Jet Life and shit. He called me one day, like, um, Currency having a... a um, or like get together with all New Orleans artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and like that, just pull up on them. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I ain't know nothing about this, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, let me just go pull up. So when I pull up, I, I sit down in there, I'm just listening to the music you make, I'm like, oh, this hard. And then I'm like, I'm eating in there, and I'm in there like five minutes, I eat my sounds, I'm like, all right, because it's looking like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be in here, not making no music, just, I'm like, nah, I might just push out. So I'm about to leave. He, he said, pause the music. Everybody looked. He looked at me. He said, I thought you came here to work. I'm like, oh. So boy, I'm like, I'm going to come right back because my partner had ordered another sandwich. So boy, it's uh -huh. like two minutes away. We go get the sandwich. We was gone for like 30 minutes. The sandwich took all day. And I walked back in the studio. And he, he came out the boot. Like, he like, he couldn't believe I came back. And so from that time, because... You know what I'm saying? At the, at the time, like, I'm the hottest artist in New Orleans. Like, me coming back was, like, showing how G you is, like, because that's morals, I, I guess, to him. So he looked like, oh, yeah. And ever since that day, we've just been locked in. We made that song. Even it's more to this story. Like, I said in the boot, I'm rapping. I keep saying, punch me in nah, delete that, delete that. He stopped it. He, like, he pressed the thing to, to what I can hear him. Mm -hmm. He, like, you still in the trenches. Don't forget. <laughs> 
Like oh, he told well, me just like I that. Love Kurt. That's no, he told me that just like that. I said, you right. I came and I just flashed on. I'm like, yeah. He said, yeah, that's what I want here. <laughs> Dang, I currency. Yeah, he a G for sure. I love that. Yeah, he a G. He's, he's still in the trenches. And you I ain't see, Hollywood. I see that um, you also worked with like Babyface Ray and yeah. Ice Wear Vezo. So how is it linking with them? I'm about to say, I ain't lying. I think the whole Detroit cool as hell. Like, cause Vezo, Vezo give a lot of game. You know what I'm saying? Vezo ain't know me from nowhere. We start talking, he just like do this, do that. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And Ray, that's my dog, dog. He just so G'd up. Everything, everything about him G'd up. I just like, like the whole Detroit movement they got going on. Yeah, yeah they definitely going crazy. I know Babyface Ray just put out his, his tape. So, yeah, I was listening to it earlier. Really? Yeah, it's hard, <laughs> for sure. And I even, when I was looking at your story, I saw that Meek Mill posted you too. Yeah. For your, uh, your Vulture Island video is going crazy. Yeah. Talk about that. Uh, you know what's funny? I knew Vulture Island was going to do that. Really? Like, I swear to God. But seeing people, how people reacting for real, like the bigger artists in the world, that's mm -hmm. crazy to me. Because when, I, when I'm making music and everybody's saying, you the one, you the one, you know, they can say that, but you don't really know that, like, you know what I'm saying? So just seeing it like, like, damn, like, I ain't never think this would be, this would happen for me. Like, and I ain't gonna lie, that's one thing I, I encourage every artist to just keep going because it can happen for anybody. Like, if it happened for me, it can happen for anybody in this world, for sure. And you said it took you like what, three to four, three to four weeks to yeah, blow up? Four weeks. That shit is so That shit's so real too. Keep in mind, like, at the time, music, when I started rapping, music wasn't about music. It was about who get the flies and who you know what I'm saying? It was like really gimmicky at the time. So when I dropped and I damn near had the fly, but I had the music that was good, it's like you couldn't really lose with that. What type of legacy would you want to leave with your fans? Um, just a, I won't, I won't give them every, every part of me for real. You know what I'm saying? To, to let them understand, like I said, anybody can go through this and anybody can make it for real because ain't nobody was there to tell me that. Like nobody told me you can, like for where I'm from, people outside where I'm from was telling me like, you got, you got an opportunity, like do this, do this, do this. But, Ain't nobody really where I'm from, like, you know what I'm saying? Made me feel like I could be greater than this world. I feel like the legacy I want to leave is like making everybody feel like I could take my own path. You don't have to follow nobody's footsteps. You don't have to nothing. Just do your own path and you can be the greatest in the world. Now, right. how do you feel like really being one of the ones in New Orleans right now that's putting on for the city? I feel like God did it for a reason because I'm gonna bring it back. Like, I ain't want them get gonna get up there and be like unfollowing everybody. And nothing. no, I'm bringing it back, back, like for sure. All that, everything coming back to New Orleans. I'm bringing the whole world to New Orleans for sure. Now, real quick, I want you to talk about your transition from going to an independent artist to now being signed. What was that like? Um, I feel like it was kind of. A tough thing to do because my label started signing me six months after I was making music. Like I said, I had four weeks and I was lit already. So by my sixth month, it's like, oh, this is him in my city, you know what I'm saying? So they signed me. So I'm thinking once I get signed, it's going to be like, oh, the label going to do everything for me. All I got to do is just drop my music. Nah, I feel like I ain't really mess up because I learned fast that don't depend on nobody to, to go hard for you, how you mm -hmm. go hard for you, you know what I'm saying? Go hard for you and let everybody catch up. So yeah, that's about the hardest thing, just me depending on on just, you know what I'm saying, connects when you gotta go make your own shit. Did and, you feel uh, like it was a little too early for you to sign when they uh, talked about signing you? Nah, it, it, I feel like it was too early musically, but for my life, how I was living, like I was getting evicted from my house at that time. Like, boy, I was, my mom, we moved all our stuff out of that house and everything, like we was in the U-Haul. We pulled up to where we was moving, we was in a project. I'm the biggest New Orleans artist at the time. I'm lying, love. I'm the biggest New so Orleans artist you, at the time. So as your name was buzzing the whole time, your, your family was like getting evicted. What was that? 
like real shit. And we moving our stuff and we pull up to the project. I said, Ma, I can't live here. If we live here, I'm going to die here. I said it just like that. And my mama said, put all that shit back in the truck. We got in the truck, we went back to the other house. Because you know, it was the, I started rapping in the pandemic. They couldn't put nobody out their house. Mm-hmm. So he really, like, lawfully couldn't put us out. So, but when I signed, man, let's go, we out of here. You know what I'm saying? Rob, you got a crazy story. I like, knew, huh? Oh my God. <laughs> you got a crazy story. Yeah. Damn, it's kind of like I don't even want to talk anymore. You could just finish telling your story. I'm gonna say that's it though. <laughs> I got, you know, I got my mom out that house, and, and now it's my turn. You know what I'm saying? Live my life. I'm 22, and it's time for me to really live. And I get a chance to live how I want to live. My sister get a chance to live how they want to live. Like, we ain't really got nothing to worry about no more. And what's next for you as an artist for this year? Just. Work harder, work harder than I did before to even get where I'm at right now. Because it's all about work. Like being in the studio 24/7, everybody should be doing that. Because that one hour you missed out the studio, they got a kid in the garage right now trying to take your spot. Like, and I ain't going for none of that. Like I said, I know how it feel to be there, and he trying to get from there, and he can't come take this spot. You know what I'm saying? And before we wrap up, what advice would you give to? the younger people who are having a hard time navigating through life right now? Um, I feel like you should start going to church more because when I was going through, like, what I was going through, I was going to church and just realizing that God was putting everything that he put in my face for a reason, like, for me to be going through this and stay, be able to talk to y'all and tell the world what I went through, you know what I'm saying, and let them understand you can come from depression and the rum all day, you know what I'm saying? like. Like, I feel like everybody go through that, but I feel like I'm giving them a voice to tell them, like, keep going because it's really God trying to make sure you stay as humble as you stand right now while you're in that depression room for when you get there, stay that same way. What? Damn. I'm like, I'm taking it in. Like, I'm really taking it in. <laughs> Before we wrap up, any last words or shout outs? Shout out New Orleans, shout out Vultures, you know what I'm saying? We're about to turn up, that's it. All right, yee yee, lot of money, lot of cars, lot of drugs, yee yee, all sitting, take his head, clean off, yee yee, mile, mile, yee.